Hey guys, so a lot of new players are hitting level 60 for the first time, and once you hit that max level you're not quite sure how to keep progressing your character. For example, endgame currencies, achievements, what it is you want to earn or work towards, and how to do that. So in this video we're going to go through achievements, endgame currency, how to earn them, and what you can buy with those currencies to make your hero stronger. So first things first, endgame currencies. The first currency we're going to look at are Odin Marks. Now Odin Marks can be earned in a variety of different ways, one of which is Legendary Quests. These can begin at level 20, and upon completion you'll receive Odin Marks or a large amount of EXP, and a new quest will be prompted right after that you can start right away. Hey, now if you go to your waypoint, and under Hubs you select Odin's Palace, you'll find an NPC where you can buy Legendary items. These items are a must-have to have a powerful character, and you're gonna have to level those over time, as you fight. Now each legendary has five tiers or five levels. As you gain experience, you'll get a new passive buff to go along with your character. Now you can also travel to Hammer Bay, where you'll find a new NPC with those same legendary items, but they'll be grade 80 instead of grade 70. Now these are only equipable at level 60, but they give double the stats. They also cost more Odin marks, a thousand versus 300, but for a main character it's well worth it. One more thing you can use Odin Marks for is to enchant your artifacts. You can add things such as 5% brutal strike chance, or extra spirit or extra health, based on what your hero needs. So next we're going to look at shared quests. If you hit L and go to your typical mission log, you'll find two more tabs. One called shared quests and one called influence missions. So if you click and look at shared quests, you'll see shared quests for the day with daily bonus available. So the shared quest on the very left, you'll see Patrol Shared. Sometimes it's Hightown Patrol, sometimes it's Industry Patrol, and sometimes it's Midtown Patrol. But basically, it gives you quests in that zone to complete. And once you've defeated the enemies it tells you to, or completed the events within that endgame mode, you'll receive a lot of different loot. Now there's also Terminals Shared. And what happens with the shared terminal quest is it gives you a certain amount of mobs to defeat in different terminals as well as specific bosses. And once you complete that, you'll also receive your daily bonus. Now for shared one-shots, you'll either be prompted to go to the Bronx Zoo one-shot, March to Axis, or Vibranium Mines. And within that, you might have to rescue 8 scientists, defeat a certain amount of enemies, destroy tech barrels, and defeat the bosses throughout. Next we're going to look at influence missions. Now influence missions can be found by the GLF captain and the GLF lieutenant NPCs at Hammer Bay. These quests give you protectors commendations and heroes commendations. They also give you influence points towards the GLF quartermaster, who's another close by NPC. Now as you gain influence with that NPC, you'll find more crafting recipes and extra items that you might be able to buy from them, so they're definitely worth doing. One NPC gives you a daily mission, and the other NPC gives you a weekly mission. Completing the weekly mission takes a lot more time, but you also get more heroes commendations and more protectors commendations as a result. So the next question becomes, what's the point of earning all these commendations? Well around Odin's palace you'll find different recipes that you can purchase to increase the grade of your gear, which will make it stronger. You'll find different recipes to craft extremely powerful weapons. And you can also use them to purchase the materials used to craft those weapons after you've purchased the recipe. Now if you go back to the GLF Quartermaster, you'll notice he also sells some recipes that got unlocked with a certain amount of influence points. Those can also be purchased through Protector's Commendation. And there's some other crafting materials that you can get with Hero's Commendations, Humans as well as recipes changed. for pretty impressive gear. Okay, next up is the Danger Room. Now after you've entered the Danger Room through the hub, you'll see a vendor where you can buy a Hollow Wolverine, exclusive team up, ultimate power upgrades, a bunch of different boxes with a rare boss artifact, extra little visuals you can attach to your catalyst, a shield blackbird mini pet, a few different artifacts that I think you can only get at this NPC, like a cosmically enhanced Fist of Apocalypse. I'm not sure where else you'd get that because he's not even in the game. A uh, bunch of rings, uniques, a bunch of relics. Now how you get danger room merits is you go to the scenario crafter in the middle. I was a room once. There's no easy and way you to purchase explain danger room how that scenario. felt. Now how you earn these danger room merits is through the danger room. So if you go to the danger room event scenario on the right, you can purchase a bunch of unique event challenge scenarios. 
You can also find danger room scenarios just through playing the game, they'll drop randomly. Or you can go to the crafter in the center and you can purchase a common danger room scenario. If you have two or more, you can craft an uncommon danger room scenario and keep continuing up to cosmic. Now let's look at achievements. Hit V on your keyboard and the achievements window will pop up. Now you'll see there's achievements for specific heroes, for specific game modes, events, just exploring the game overall. And as you complete more and more achievements, you'll start to accumulate points that put you up on a leaderboard. Now as a reward for completing these achievements, you'll receive little boxes that give you extra loot, buffs, boosts, nothing permanent, but it's something fun to work towards, and it does benefit you. Now let's talk about customizing your character with infinity points. If you look at the bottom where your experience bar used to be before you hit max level, it probably went from green to blue. That blue represents your infinity point bar. So when that fills, you get a new infinity point. Now it doesn't matter who you're playing, if you earn one infinity point on one hero, that infinity point goes to every hero you earn. So if you earn three points on Ghost Rider and six on Juggernaut, that means you have nine infinity points on every hero you have unlocked or every hero you will unlock. Now if you hit P, you'll see your powers tree, but there's a tab to the right called Infinity System. Now in that Infinity System, you can add these points into extra defense, health, damage, strength, durability, whatever you choose. So based on how you want to play your hero or where you might be lacking based on your gear, you can use these points to compensate or to overpower your hero in a specific way. Now the Infinity System used to be known as something else before the rebrand, but one nice change they made when integrating this system was they made limitless points. What that means is if you play this game for 100,000 hours, your points will never cap out. You can keep it earning infinity points just by playing the game. So if you're not too into gearing your hero and spending all this time in your stash sorting out what to equip on your hero, simply playing whatever you find fun for endgame will naturally make all of your heroes stronger over time. So that's it. Hopefully this helped. Enjoy.